These small stitched pieces are an ideal project to get you started in slow stitching. Using simple stitches, you can stitch a lot or a little and come out with a beautiful project. These can be accomplished in just a few hours and I think you'll be really happy with the results. So join me today as we make these two collages from start to finish. I'm going to talk about the supplies that I recommend and then I'm going to show the two simple stitched pieces that anyone can do and get a really good result. And then after that, we're going to dive deep into the details of creating these two collages. So join me today and come stitch along. Let's get started. I like to use DMC six stranded floss. They come in skeins like this and I wind them onto bobbins. For colors, I always have a black, a white, an off-white, and a gray, and then I bring in colors based on my project. You can use one strand up to six strands, depending on your preference, depending on the look you're going for. I tend to use two strands most of the time. I occasionally will use one strand on a very small project. You should use a needle that's comfortable for you. I like to use these golden eye embroidery needles and these gold eye Milner's needles. There's also other brands of Milner's needles and other brands of embroidery needles. Your project needs to have a backing and I use felt. This is felt that I buy at my local quilt shop and it's very, very soft. It's a little bit thicker and softer than the felt that you can buy in a craft store, but that felt is also good. For me, I like this felt because it's very, very soft and easy to stitch through. You can also use wool felt, which is often thicker. You can also use fabric as a backing. You can use a quilting cotton or a muslin. Experiment and see what you like, what feels good in your hand, and what's easy for you to stitch through. Both of these stitched pieces are very doable. This is a snippet of fabric with some mushrooms on it, and I simply used an off-white floss to stitch around the mushrooms. I created some blanket stitch and I added some French knots. I then stitched some felt on the back and this piece is complete. This was a piece of fabric where I loved the color of the background and the floral design. I stitched around the flowers in a matching color then I came back and I did running stitches in a green that was close to the color of the leaves. And I used a darker teal color and stitched running stitches in the other direction in the bottom area. I then finished by doing blanket stitches all the way around the piece using all the colors that I'd stitched with. Very simple and yet very beautiful. Both of these projects can be completed in one sitting. These two pieces are only a little bit more complicated. Instead of using one piece of fabric, I created a really simple collage. This one has three fabrics and this one has two fabrics. These two have more stitching, so they took slightly longer. I also added backings to these and a safety pin so they can be pinned on as brooches. So let's start with this piece I'm going to go back and forth as I create both of these pieces at the same time and I'm going to start with this piece. The size of my pieces of felt are just under two inches or five centimeters. One piece is more rectangular and one is square. I decided to use this size because they're just slightly bigger than these safety pins that I have and I may want to make one or more of these into a brooch. I'm bringing out some fabric scraps to see what will work. And the first thing I noticed was this piece of selvage that has these five elephants on it. They fit really nicely onto this rectangular piece. So I'm bringing out other fabrics to see what matches. I'm bringing in some similar colors. And now I'm starting to bring in some colors that will complement. So I've decided to use a piece of this green fabric. I'm going to cut it down to size 
So it's going to become the background of this collage. So it's just slightly bigger. I'm going to decide which orientation I want to have this fabric in. So I flip it around a few times until I find a side that I like. All sides actually look good here, so you can't go wrong. I still have the little end pieces that I've cut off and I'm going to save them in case I want to bring them back in. And I've tested out a few little pieces, but at this point, there's nothing that's jumping out at me. So I'm going to stick with these two pieces and I'm going to base them in place. For my second piece, I'm thinking about cutting out a butterfly. So the important thing here is just to choose a butterfly that will fit without taking up the entire background. So I found this coral colored butterfly and it's got this nice teal in the background. So now I'm gonna pull some fabrics that complement these coral colors, testing a few things out to see what matches. And I'm also looking at the background fabric, that greeny turquoise, finding some good matches for that. I decide to use some of this striped fabric. So I cut a smaller piece and I'm gonna move it around and see if there's a place where it fits. I also have the option of having the stripes go horizontally or vertically. So I play around with my placement. I bring in another color that works really well, has that coral tones, and I complete my collage. So now I have my two collages and I'm going to base them in place using regular sewing thread. You could also use pins here. So I'm taking small stitches on the front and then I'm jumping across on the back, taking just enough stitches to secure everything in place. And I only take a few stitches in each piece, and that allows me to shift them slightly as my stitching progresses. So here's what it looks like on the back. Everything is secure. I'm gonna do the same thing with my other piece. There's only two pieces there, so there's not a lot of stitching to do. I'm just going to go through a piece with the elephants, we'll go right across there, and then take a few stitches in the upper area to secure the green. And now I'm going to trim away excess fabric, and I'm going to leave some overhang because there's some shrinkage when you stitch, and also that gives me the option to fold some fabric towards the back. My next step is to choose floss colors that match the colors in my piece. So I've pulled out a dark and a light shade of coral, and a dark and a light shade of teal. This lighter teal is a very close match to the background of the butterfly. I'm also going to bring in a purple shade, which is a color that I see in the body and the antenna of the butterfly. On my other piece, I'm bringing a dark and a light shade that complement the background. I found a golden yellow shade that works really well with the colors in the elephants and a darker topazy shade that matches as well. And I always have black, white, off-white, and gray that I can bring into the pieces at any time. I'm gonna start with two strands of the purple and I'm going to create blanket stitch around the edge of this piece. I make a knot in the end of my thread and I bring it up. You can start anywhere. I tend not to start at a corner. And I'm gonna fold over the fabric. I'm going to take a stitch and I'm going to keep my thread in my left hand. I'm gonna hold it to the side so that when I come up with the stitch, I'm creating the loop of that blanket stitch. I'm also using my finger to hold down the edge of that fabric to fold it down as I stitch. So here's this piece with the blanket stitch all around it. So why add this blanket stitch now at the very, very beginning? I think because with this piece, I had three pieces of patchwork that were very different and I wanted to contain this area. So now I have a really good sense of the shape of this piece being square, where each piece of fabric ends and the other begins. And I can now look at the piece as a whole 
with this small frame around it and I can start to develop ideas about the stitching that I want to do. Switching to my other piece, I'm going to use two strands of the golden color and I'm going to begin stitching in the background above the piece of fabric. I'm going to take straight stitches across the piece and turn and make more straight stitches or slow stitches all the way to the top. And then I'm going to turn those lines into crosses or plus signs. So here are my rows of my plus signs. And now I'm going to come in with two strands of my darker topaz color and begin stitching on the bottom of my piece. These are straight stitches. I'm varying the length of them. And I'm not too concerned about them being particularly straight in one direction or the other. In fact, I'm letting them angle from left to right. Then I've come in with a dark gray and I've created some blanket stitching around the edges to contain my piece, much like I did with the butterfly piece, to create a border and to add some color. As I look at the piece, I decide that I want to see about bringing in some more of that selvage fabric that I've snipped off. If I turn it the other way, I can make this sort of oval shape. And I'm liking the way that that looks. So I'm gonna cut that piece out and place it on top. It almost looks like a sun above those elephants. And I'm really liking that. So I'm going to stitch that in place. So I've stitched that sun shape in place. And now I'm gonna add some more stitching to start blending everything together. And in a sense to cover up those partial circular shapes so that the central one is highlighted. So I'm making horizontal stitches in this teal color. I'm gonna do that on both sides. So I completed that stitching in that teal color and I also brought in some of that off-white in the upper area and I created running stitches in between those golden crosses from before. And I think that's really helped to blend everything together. I've also brought in some of that darker topaz color on the bottom with some blanket stitching on the edges to start to create a border. And I think I wanna add some more of the white color on the top. So now I've added some more blanket stitching on the edges in the white, and that's really started to tie everything together. The one area that's drawing my eye is that large oval shape in the middle. And I think I wanna bring in that dark gray color and outline it. So you can see what a difference that makes. I feel like it's really tying everything together. I've added some stitching in the bottom, underneath the elephants, in that green color. And that green really matches the green in the top area. So everything has really come together in a unified way. So now I'm gonna go back and stitch on my butterfly piece. And I'm gonna use the same method where I'm going to add stitches, straight stitches, in different directions and different colors to add texture. So I've used that teal color and I moved it all across the top area, behind the butterfly and beside the butterfly. And now I'm gonna do the same thing in the bottom area. So I've moved that teal color below the butterfly and added some lines of stitching. And I've also added my two shades of coral right onto the butterfly. I've added purple to the body, and now I'm looking at the edges and thinking about what I did with my elephant piece, and I wanna add some more stitching around the edges. So I'm going to bring in the coral colors and more of the teal colors. So here's my butterfly piece. I've added some stitching on the edges and I'm feeling like it's complete. Now I'm going to add a backing and some safety pins to the back of these pieces. And I'll show you how I did that. I've cut a piece of felt. This is actually craft felt, and I've cut it just slightly smaller than the size of my piece so it fits on the back. You can see here with this other piece, I've already stitched it on. So what I like to do is clip off the corners of the piece. That makes it easier when I'm stitching so those corners don't poke out where I don't want them. So once I've done that, I can just come in with one or two strands of floss 
depending on your preference, and stitch it in place. So I tie a knot and I bury it underneath my felt and I stitch into the back of the piece and through my felt. I periodically check the front of my piece to make sure that my stitching isn't coming through to the front and I work my way all the way around. And then when I'm finished, I can take a stitch in the middle of my felt and bury my knot or I can continue and I can stitch on my pin. Just make sure that you stitch on the side that doesn't open and that you stitch it on so that the top can't be seen from the front. So here's the other piece where I've stitched it on. You can see I just go around the pin and I leave a little bit of wiggle room on each end. And your stitched collage brooch is complete. I really enjoyed making these collages. I hope it inspires you to embellish a piece of fabric that you love or to create a simple collage that you can then stitch on and create a brooch. In my next video, I'm gonna show how I created this red wing blackbird and this dove. I hope to see you then. Until next time, happy stitching.